Welcome back to our C Sharp uh, Beginners Tutorial. In uh, the previous lesson, um, we looked at uh, objects and we saw an example of an object. Uh, we defined an object. We said an object uh, is just a collection of variables and methods. And we saw an example here. So in, in today's lesson, um, I think I promised this uh, in the previous lesson that we were going to look at class. Uh, but before we just look at class, I would like to um, just um, explain. Someone might be wondering why would you want to um, have one entity that holds a collection of variables and methods? Okay. Um, now, uh, to to do that, I'll just go ahead and um, let's let's. Uh, if you remember our our first was it the first program no not the first program there was a program uh, a program we wrote where we had um, a scenario where we wanted uh, uh, someone's a hum uh, a person's first name so we had something like this string first name no, I'll just make this static for now um, okay so we had string first name we had a uh, string uh, static string uh, last name and then we had a uh, static string uh, middle name sorry string middle name okay I just I just want to cite us an example of where we could uh, where we, we we might need an object okay like what's why do we really need to fuse together a um, bunch of variables and methods and put them under one entity or like what advantage does that give us over um, having the variables and methods like um, separated the way we've been doing like we've always been uh, having like in our previous program we had a program where we had uh, first name middle name and last name all as separate uh, variables um, uh, and not fused together as as an object so what advantage will an object give us now imagine in a scenario where we we want to okay suppose we're creating a program where we're, we're going to keep or we're going to store records of some humans or maybe workers Okay, workers in a certain facility or in an office and our program is supposed to document like their identity and um, some other information for example let's say we just want their first name their last name their middle name um, let, let's just take these three for example okay so um, you see in our program for us to be able to store or to use more than one person's um, uh, details at the same time, we would need like would need as many variables as there are people, right? Apart from that, we will also need variables for each person. We will need a variable to store his first name. We'll need another variable to store that person's uh, middle name. We'll need another variable to store that same person's last name. Okay, so what I mean is, imagine we have, suppose we have five uh, workers, okay, we have five workers, and in our program, for some reason, we're going to need to use those, uh, the properties or the details of those five uh, people at the same time, okay, we're going to need to use uh, their details at the, first, uh, at the same time. What that means is, we'll need to have variables like uh, something like um, person one first name okay then uh, person two last name person three uh, sorry not person two last name person one last name person um, three um, uh, what am I doing person one middle name okay okay there we go so we're going to need these three variables to be created declared and uh, 
all and they would all be serving the first person okay that's uh, person one and then for us to be able to store the second person's details we need to create similar variables but maybe we'll just change the name from person one to person two so person two first name middle name and last name okay and then if we need another person and so on okay so we'll just let's say we have three people for example so we'll, ha we'll need a person three first name middle name and last name okay so now look at what happens when we need suppose we need um for some reason we want to combine or we want to use person person one's detail uh, person one's details so anyway in our code we're going to be writing uh, something like person one whenever we need person one suppose we need person one middle name we need to write person one middle name okay like in our code where we're going to need where we're going to need to use person one middle name we'll write person one middle name okay and where we're going to need to use person two last name we'll write um person two last name okay not just that um also in situations where we're going to need like uh suppose we have a method let's say we have a method here static um show persons let's say the name of the method is a point method and the name of the method is show person details so uh this method is just supposed to display like it, it, it will say the person's first name is this his middle name is this his last name is this we'll need to pass a first name right we need to pass a first name a middle name uh, a middle name and uh, a last name right okay and then inside here we'll do whatever console.write line or whatever code uh, whatever code implementation right doesn't matter I just want to cite an example so whatever code implementation we need to write here we're, we're going to write um, write it there and then in our main method when we're going to call this uh, show person's details suppose we want um, uh, person one we want to show persons uh, person one's uh, details we we'll need to write something like show person details and then in the arguments we we'll need to pass person one uh, first name okay person one middle name right and uh, person one last name okay notice um, the reason we're only passing three uh, details here is because we're only storing three details now can you imagine a scenario where um, the details we're storing for example we need the person's um, ID number for example we need the person's um, uh, gender we need the person suppose the list of um, details we need to get is up to like say 10 for example that means in this show person's details uh, in this show person details we will need to uh, provide 10 different um, uh, 10 different uh, um, arguments that are supposed to be passed in okay so the fourth argument will be like uh, gender right and then the ID number and then if when we're calling also when we're calling the method we need to pass all those details for person one alone if we want to do it for person two we'll do we'll need to pass all those details for person two now i don't know if um it's making sense now but you should begin to see like you should get a hint that there's like there's something inefficient about uh writing code like this okay and that is the whole point of objects that is the reason why you need objects when you have imagine if these everything here about the person one imagine if all the details about person one are fused together under one single entity 
suppose we call that um, say suppose we call it an object and we call it a person right and uh, we call it a uh, person one for example okay suppose imagine this person one object contains every single um, variable or every single detail of person one it means when we're going to call show person details all we need to pass is person one and that's it we don't need to pass anything more than person one because everything is fused together inside the person one object right and then in our uh, in our method we also need to provide only we also need to provide only um, uh, an argument only a single argument that takes the person whose details we want to display okay so this is the main reason why do we need um, objects actually we, we wouldn't even need this method right we wouldn't even need this method I'm just um, given an ex I'm just trying to give an example because in the real sense of an object this 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 kind of method is actually going to be embedded remember um, objects are not only collections of variables they can also contain methods okay so it means something like this this kind of method can also be embedded inside the person one right so when we want to show um, persons one details all we need to do is we're going to need something like that is if we have uh, created it we'll just type person one dot show person sorry it's because we haven't defined person one anyway but um we'll just need to write person uh one dot show person details right and then open and close the bracket this is i know this is for now this is wrong um like it wouldn't run because we haven't defined person one but if in our implementation assuming we had defined this this um uh, we have defined our object. I'm just using object as a placeholder because we haven't uh, created our class If we do create our class and we create a person one and it has in our definition for um, The uh, class we create we have this method then we would be able to just call person one dot show person details We don't even need you can see it makes our code very very short. We don't even need that um, method okay and everything we need about person one is going to be fused inside this person one okay so suppose we want the person one first name and we had already defined it we'll just write person one dot first name okay and that's it that is if we need person one first name if we need person one last name we just write person one dot last name okay so everything about that person is fused together under one entity okay that is what an object is and it makes your programming so much easier okay um i think it would be good to probably stop <laughs> this lesson here uh, I should have combined this lesson and the previous lesson because they are all on objects trying to um, show you the basics of objects and the reason why you might need objects instead of just having normal variables and methods okay in your program um, an object can actually make your coding much more organized because in the sense that it kinds of um, it kinds of fuses together related um, uh, related items in your code in one under one single entity okay all right um, in the next lesson we're going to look at a class I told you to create an object all these I've been doing I'm just giving you an example of how it could be done it's not actually a good implementation that's why we're having red lines all over the place okay um, in the next lesson we're going to look at how to create a class and then when we do create our class, we will create objects from that class, okay? The reason why you need to create a class is because 
to have a to create an object I, I think I mentioned it in the previous lesson to create an object you need a class okay to create an object you have to create you have to define your class first okay every object must come from a class so if you have your class you can now create your object from that class okay so um, I'll end this lesson here and see you in the next lesson